What's new crew? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Cassandra, and today we are making some freezer meals. I'm working on some freezer meals today. I wanted to get some convenience things back in my freezer. It's been a long time, and I've really been missing them. So today I made a quick list of things. Today is also the 31st of October, which means it's the last day of October. If you're new around here, I grocery shop once a month, which means the last day of the month is the day of the month I have the least amount of food in my house. And I'm not going grocery shopping or anything like that to make these freezer meals. I picked meals specifically based on what I had left over, what I still had in my freezers and things like that. So we are going to do a potato soup, chicken fajitas, meatballs, pasties, and some burgers. So last night overnight, I took out eight pounds of ground beef out of my freezers from the beef that we buy in bulk. Let that thaw out on the counter overnight. It's perfect, it will be easy to use to make our meatballs and our burgers later. Just kind of looked in my fridge, kind of figuring out what I had um, to put some other meals in the freezer. I found two chicken breasts, which is perfect because I have a lot of peppers that came out of the garden uh, like two weeks ago. I didn't want to put them in the freezer unless they were going into a freezer meal. So we're gonna do chicken fajitas. Um, and then for our potato soup, I have a whole bunch of carrots that I bought from the store. Um, these are still looking really good, but I have them, so let's use them. Great for a potato soup. I also have a little bit of bacon in the refrigerator from a meal that we made a couple days ago. I've got lots of onions. So we are going to prep those things. I'm gonna prep my potato soup first. Drink a little bit of coffee. I laid the baby down. It's a little after 9 a.m. I don't know if she's gonna nap, um, but she was very cranky, really needed one. So we're gonna see what happens. I have the baby monitor up here. I'm watching her. She's just kind of like chilling in the crib right now. So we'll see what happens. Um, if she naps, great. If she doesn't, I'll just go get her. We'll take a pause and we'll come back in a little bit. So I'm gonna start with the base for my potato soup here. And then this bag is going to be for our chicken fajitas. I wanna put garlic in both of them, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of the soup base. This is my absolute favorite soup base. I get it from an uh, Amish shop near me. Um, it's wonderful, I love it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. I'm gonna drop in some pepper, I'm gonna put some pepper in my fajitas too. And then I love to put bay leaves in my soups. It adds so much flavor. So I'm gonna try to grab the ones that are more whole. Perfect. And then both of these, I can either cook these on the stove, the fajitas I can put in the oven, I can put either one in a crock pot. So it's gonna be really great. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of lime juice in my fajitas here. I already washed my vegetables this morning. Well, earlier this morning. But I'm gonna start with my potatoes here. I want to work smarter and not harder, so I wanna prep all my vegetables first and then put the uh, meat on my cutting board here. I'll make sure that we do the raw chicken last. I am not following any recipes for these in particular. This is just kind of how I make either my soup or my chicken fajitas. So we're gonna do this. I wish I had some more chicken because I would also really like to prep like some honey soy chicken or some teriyaki chicken, something like that. Um, but I can always do a second batch of cooking or a freezer meal prepping another day but I really wanna get this done. I have been very lull when it comes to making dinner recently, and I think having some freezer meals, some things that I can just dump in, not have to worry about, will help me out a lot and help me kind of be inspired again to get in the kitchen, which I think is pretty normal coming out of preservation season. I think just need a little bit of mental break from the kitchen and I think this is going to be the thing that helps me out. I wanna make sure I'm saving some of these potatoes because we are also gonna be making pasties and I want some of these potatoes for my 
pasties. I just wanted to be able to show you guys that you can make freezer meals with not a lot of ingredients. It doesn't need to be crazy fancy meals or anything like that. So you don't need to have your own separate grocery shop or anything like that. You can really just work with whatever you have on hand. So we're gonna work on, but we are working with whatever we have right now. So it doesn't need to be a whole separate part of your grocery budget. You can really just kind of look around, see what you have and come up with some meals to throw together. And that's exactly what I've done today. Okay, so as I was saying, I know some people really like their carrots shredded in soups. Maybe I will shred them. Usually I don't, usually I leave them whole, but. I think today I am gonna shred it, why not? I do also have some frozen celery that I could throw in, but it was kind of an oversight in my garden this year. I didn't grow celery because I thought I had enough, but when looking in my freezer, I realized I don't. I only have about a gallon Ziploc bag left, and we really like to use celery in other soups, not necessarily this potato soup, so, I'm gonna save that celery because we like that more in like our pot pies and in our chicken noodle soup. Otherwise, you could definitely throw some celery in here if you wanted. I love seeing the uh, array of colors that happens when you do freezer meals like this. Okay, so the very last thing I'm gonna do is chop up this half onion that I already had peeled it in the fridge. I'm just going to slice it really thin. I remember when I was first learning how to cook, I was asking my mother-in-law how her chicken noodle soup always tasted so much better than mine when I was literally making it exactly the way that she had taught me and she told me that I was not using enough onion. So if you want the key to a good soup, according to my mother-in-law, it is an insane amount of onion. I'm actually gonna set the rest of this onion aside for the pasties. Okay, so this is gonna be my pasty bowl. Because it is Halloween, as soon as my older girls get off the bus, I'm gonna hand them some food, we're gonna get in the car, we're gonna head to town so we can get there for trick or treating. So I figured pasties would be great for my husband and I, the kids don't love my pasties a lot they really like it when we get them from the pasty shop so but i make my we like our pasties more traditional my husband and myself so potatoes a little bit of cabbage beef onion you do bell peppers kind of whatever you want but i'm gonna make ours pretty basic today so this is just gonna be my pasty filling really quick We'll get this going and then I'll stick this in the fridge until later when we're ready to make our pasty dough and get our pasties stuffed and baked, which I won't do until later this afternoon. That way they're fresh. We're shooting to leave our house for around four. They take an hour to cook, so I'll put them in probably around 2.30. And then I also I also want to make probably a stromboli for the kids to eat for dinner tonight. Well, I'm making nothing. Oh, I'm nothing. Hey, do you want the rest of this carrot? What? If I cut the end off? No, thank don't you. want it. Okay. No. I'm just watching everything over you. <sighs> Mom, can we get a camera to help you? So here's my pasty filling right now. I did decide to shred just a little bit of a carrot in there, potatoes, onion. Um, I am going to slightly season. I will season this again once I put my meat in there, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I wanna do all my vegetables first and then I'll pull out meat just to keep everything a little bit separate here. Okay, now for to finish off our fajitas. These are the peppers from the garden. They're looking very sad, but 
they are definitely still usable they definitely have some chunks that maybe aren't as great i'm gonna give those to the chickens they will love that but i am just going to slice these peppers throw them in the bag with um our garlic and our pepper a little bit of lime juice ready to go in the freezer and also most of our pasty filling prepped i've made pasties once before very recently and i was pleasantly surprised with how easy it went um if you're new around here i am terrible at making pie crusts it's something i struggle with very much and i was kind of assuming that pasty dough was going to be the same thing um but it went really well i'm hoping that it'll be the same today so hopefully i won't run into any any issues but you never know if you're looking to do some freezer meals and you just don't want to spend all day in the kitchen which is kind of where i'm at right now these little bagged dinners are so convenient they don't take a lot of time to put together but they surely make a really big impact they're so easy to just dump in a crock pot even like before you leave for work before you go out for the day whatever it is oh i cut that all sorts of funny but that onion is so wrong all right let's get this taken care of i'm gonna rinse everything get rid of my scraps so that this onion doesn't continue to assault me but it'll clear the clear your sinuses right out oh my goodness okay because i use this towel on my face i'm gonna throw it that way i don't accidentally reuse it pull a new kitchen towel I have some already cooked bacon here this is just left over from blts that we made the other day i'm just going to cut this into smaller pieces and get this in my potato soup then when i go to cook this because i already have the soup base in here i'm just gonna add in probably like a quart and a half of water dump this in my crock pot and let it go all day then i can make some fresh bread i can make rolls I can just pull out some crackers and then I like to top my soup with a little bit of sour cream and cheese. And that is our really simple potato soup. So this one is done. If you wanted to, you could also throw, throw kielbasa in this, anything like that. That'll work really well too. Ham chunks, whatever you want, but this is just what I have. So that's done now where did we go here i have my chicken here i did not let this thaw all night i just pulled this out this morning so it's still half frozen but that's exactly what i wanted it just makes it a lot easier to cut when it's like halfway frozen so we'll slice this chicken i have a couple more spices i want to add to my bag here we're gonna add a little bit of cumin a little bit of salt and i will wash my hands switch out my cutting board and my knife give the counter a little bit of a refresh here put away the ingredients that i'm no longer working with wipe the counter down and we will move on to finishing our pasty filling and rolling out some meatballs and doing some burgers that way we can do a lot of different meal preps today with no cooking involved just the actual prepping so i'm gonna wash my hands do all the things we talked about and i'll see you guys back okay so the last couple things i want to throw in our fajitas i have some ground cumin here throw a little bit of that in there I also want to throw in a little bit of our salsa. Probably about a third of a cup I put in there. Then the very last thing I'm going to put in here is just a little bit of salt. I think I'm just going to dump in the rest of this jar of salsa here. 
is going to be done as well. So we can set this bag aside. And this will be a really easy convenience meal. You could eat this over rice. You could just make rice in your instant pot. Obviously eat it as chicken fajitas. You could eat it as a power bowl or on top of a salad, something like that. So I'm really excited to have that in the rotation as well. Our potato soup. So I'm gonna put these just in my freezer right in here that we just recently cleared out because I have a shelf in here that's open where I can lay them flat so they'll be really easy to store. Okay, on to the next task at hand. This is all of my ground hamburger that I pulled out. These are two pound blocks, that's how we get ours. So we have eight pounds of ground beef here. We're gonna handle this next. I'm gonna get a big bowl. So I flubbed up just a little bit. I'm gonna put my pasty filling into this bowl because this glass bowl is my the biggest one that I have and I want this to be able to mix my meat in. So, we're just gonna set this aside for our pasties. These are going to be my meatballs. This is four pounds of meat here. So the seasoning might look like a lot, but this is just how it is. So this is onion powder. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt. We're gonna do some pepper. I was thinking about it and I kinda wanna keep these meatballs a little bit more plain Jane. That way I can use them as Italian style meatballs or I could use them as um, like a barbecue meatball or a sweet and sour meatball or Swedish meatballs. So I wanna be able to have that flexibility. So I'm gonna leave them pretty plain Jane here. I have some plain panko breadcrumbs. This is just what I have left over from grocery shopping. So hopefully it's enough. If not, we might just have a little bit of a looser meatball, which is totally fine. I'm gonna take my ring off and I'm just gonna go in and mix this with my hands. Now you could certainly add in chopped onion, anything like that, but I find that I can never get the onion chunks <laughs> small enough where my family doesn't um, mind having them in there. So I've just resulted to just using onion powder instead. And some more breadcrumbs here. I'm just going to mix this until it's all kind of incorporated in the way I want it. If I had a little ice cream scoop, that's what I would use so that these all these meatballs are the same size. I'm just gonna eyeball it today and hope for the best. I am going to just kind of roll these meatballs onto my sheet tray here. And I am going to flash freeze them. It's cold enough today where I could probably just set these outside and they will freeze. So that's probably what I'm going to do. And then we will have four pounds of hamburger meat made as meatballs that I'm very excited about. I've been wanting to get these in the freezer for some time so I don't have to buy meatballs. It's gotten to the point where when we do spaghetti, which we do probably twice a month, um, I'll make fresh pasta. We use our canned spaghetti sauce. My kids want meatballs. They're always very disappointed when I don't have meatballs. So this is what I'm gonna do. You could mix it with some Italian sausage, which is typically what I would do, but I have a lot more ground beef than I have Italian sausage. And like we mentioned, I kinda wanna keep these meatballs a little bit more plain. That way I can use them for a lot wider of a variety of meals. That way, I don't have to make meatballs for Swedish meatballs when I have, you know, 300 meatballs that I just rolled, but they're Italian style, so. Mom, what are you rolling? Meatballs. Can I help, can I help you with the rolls? If you want to. Yay! You don't have from Jerry. Oh, thanks, buddy. So I've got about 60 meatballs on here, which is awesome. 60 meatball, meatballs out of four pounds. Definitely a couple meals worth in here, which is awesome. I am actually just going to go set these probably on my freezer in my garage. I'll 
cover it with tin foil just so nothing lands on here and i'm gonna let these par freeze out there it's definitely cold enough today there you can definitely skip the tin foil but i'm doing this just as a little peace of mind thing because it is going out in my garage so i'm just gonna go set this out there we'll come back and we'll deal with the other four pounds of meat that we have i need to put some in my pasty dough here or my pasty filling and then we're gonna split the rest of it with making some burgers that looks great to me i'm gonna set that aside and i was actually able to just fit those meatballs right in my deep freezer I wasn't sure if I was gonna have room, but they're just gonna par freeze in there. And then once they are all the way frozen, we will come back and put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and then put them in the refrigerator in here. These, same thing, I wanna leave these burger patties very plain. So Colt's up here, he just helped me. We put in some seasoned salt, some pepper, a little bit of our garlic here, onion powder. I wanna leave these plain, that way I can use them as Salisbury steaks, I can use them as burgers, we can make them into pizza burgers, I want to have variety so I also want to do another day like this where I prep a bunch of bread I want to get probably two or three batches of burger buns in the freezer I want to get some pizza crust in the freezer I want to make probably I'm not sure if I want to I'm not sure if I just want to put pizza dough in the freezer or if I actually want to make them into past or not pasties um strombolis or calzones and get pre-made ones in the freezer. I might do a bit of both. I would do that today, but it's the end of the month and I only have enough flour left to make the pasty dough and one thing of pizza crust for the kids for tonight. So I can't do that today. Okay, so how I like to store my burgers are just with these patty paper squares. They are just little squares of parchment paper. You could get parchment paper and cut them yourself, but I got these from the Dollar Tree for a dollar, so they are so worth it to me. There's a hundred in here. I use them all the time. I bought those about a year ago and have not had to buy more since. So I'm just going to take a stack here, pull out my freezer bag, and in less than an hour in the kitchen, I've been in the kitchen for 40 minutes so far, and that is also with some help from my toddler. Um, or I suppose he's not even a toddler anymore. He's gonna be four, but um, with some help from him We are just about done. So Same patty press burger press also from the Dollar Tree. This was a gift from my in-laws But you just put Add in there push it down and the burger press is totally not needed I just like them because it gives it a little bit of a more uniform shape but they are so hard to get out of here. That's the one thing I dislike about this. Putting them in my bag and stacking them in here. I'm pretty sure I can get six or eight in a bag. And this is about three pounds of meat. So a couple meals for us. Typically when I either do burgers or I'm making um, Salisbury steak or something like that, I will use five or six patties even though there are six of us. Obviously my almost 11 month old, she's not eating a whole patty. And typically my four year old and my six year old will split a patty. Um, so I'll just make a whole cheeseburger and cut it in half. And they each eat half plus their sides. And then my oldest who's eight, my husband and myself will all eat one. And that leaves us with usually two patties left over, one or two patties left over. And then my husband can bring them for work for lunch. And then I eat the leftovers here. So <clears throat> that is a huge way we're able to cook like from scratch meals like this, but not have to cook all the time is getting- <gasps> I love pink is getting meals in the freezer like this taking a day like today taking an hour out of my time and doing some prep work to make some convenience items where I can still control all the ingredients and all of the seasonings 
I can make it how we like it. I can individualize it. And I can still get the convenience of a convenience ready to go item. I also have a, two huge hams in my freezer right now. We're saving one for Christmas, we know that. Um, we had three from our pig this year, which is the most we've ever gotten off of one pig. Usually we get two hams. We got three ginormous hams. They're taking up a lot of room in one of my freezers. So I think coming up here, I'm gonna take a day and put one of those hams in my roaster so that we can get that ham kind of diced up and sliced up. That way we can have ham slices for potato soup or to put in our eggs in the morning, to put in casseroles and things. I think I'm gonna do that probably this month sometime or sometime in November, just so I can make some more room in that freezer. Here are our burger patties. We ended up getting eight, yeah. so you could definitely fit 10 yeah, in a bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna put these in our freezer as well. So, so far we have eight burger patties, about 60 meatballs, potato soup, and chicken fajitas prepped, which is a couple of meals for us, a couple convenience meals, which is really nice, plus leftovers, which is always welcome. I'm gonna take a second to get my kitchen reset one last time. It's really not bad. Uh, sink full of dishes, but that's okay. I'll deal with that later. I haven't unloaded my dishwasher yet because Cleo napped at a really weird time today for me. So we're making it work. The next thing I want to do is get the pizza crust going so that I have that rising. That way I can make the stromboli and have that taken care of for the kids for when they get home. And then um, later today I will make our pasty dough, but here's our pasty filling. It's looking great. I would love to put some pork in here. I'm I think I might. I love cabbage in my pasties. My husband doesn't, so I'm gonna pull some shredded cabbage that we prepped together during canning season, and we'll pull that out of the freezer, let it thaw, and then I'll put that just in the pasties for myself, and also for my sister, because my sister's coming trick-or-treating with us tonight. So that'll be dinner for myself, my husband, and my sister, and then the kids will have a stromboli, so. I just keep my pizza dough recipe taped to the inside of my cabinet that way whenever I need it I can just open the cabinet and look at it so we're gonna get this going I also started keeping my yeast in a thing like this in a tub or in the fridge and it's so convenient because I buy it in bulk from Sam's Club so we're gonna do one tablespoon of yeast I've got a cup and a half of water here that's what you need total but I'm gonna put in probably a half of a cup right now just to give the yeast something to sit in. And then I'm gonna throw in a tablespoon of sugar and put all the rest of the ingredients in here, get it mixed up. My pizza crust recipe is linked down below if you're interested in that. I am digging the bottom of the barrel of my sugar and my flour. So now that I have this kind of rising, or not rising, but proofing, I guess, activating, um, I'm gonna clean up my kitchen now. So this is the very last thing I have to do right now. And then my husband just called me to inform me that it's snowing where he's working, which means it's on his way up here right now. So I'm gonna finish the pizza dough and then I'm gonna run outside and string the extension cords for the chicken coop for the um, bucket warmer to keep their water from freezing. I like to wait until the last minute to do that every year because I have to run it from the chicken coop to our house, which runs across the whole yard. And we have a German Shepherd mix. She's a rescue, I love her to death. But she's got some, I don't wanna say bad habits, but she's a little sassy sometimes. And if I bring out my extension cord before the snow hits, she will eat it. So that's not good. And 100 foot extension cords are too expensive to have the dog eating them. So. I'm gonna run that out after I finish this. So let's hurry up and get this done so I can do that. And it'd be awesome if Cleo still napped while I did that. So let's see how lucky we can be today. But I'm gonna throw in a tablespoon of olive oil. You can do, I definitely would not recommend like an extra virgin or virgin olive oil. I would just do like a plain olive oil. It is too strong of a flavor for the pizza crust. So that's why I stick to that. 
What you guys told me instead of adding salt to add in garlic salt to my pizza crust and I've been doing that ever since. It's so fantastic. So I threw in a little bit of garlic salt and the last thing we have to do is throw in three and a half cups of flour. Once my pizza crust is done mixing, I'll take it out of the bowl, drizzle it with olive oil and I'm just gonna put it right back in my KitchenAid mixer and I'm gonna put it in the oven to let it rise in there. I'm completely done in the kitchen for now. I got a lot of things prepped, which I really wanted to do, which feels awesome. Very excited about that. And I was able to get dinner prep for tonight too, which is awesome. All within less than an hour in the kitchen, which is so amazing. I'm very excited about that. So here's my pizza dough. It's good, ready to go. I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it rise. And the air or something must be really wet because it used like three and a half more cups of flour than my recipe calls for. And I didn't even use all the water. Um, I still have over half a cup of water in here. So that does happen. Sometimes it just is what it is. But because of that, I don't have enough flour left anymore to make my pasty dough. So what I'm going to do is just take my, well, actually, you know, I'm just gonna leave my pasty filling in the fridge. I was gonna put it in a freezer bag and just freeze it and count it as another freezer meal, but I'll just save it and then probably when, not Wednesday, which is tomorrow on Thursday. No, today's, today's Wednesday. Probably either Thursday or Friday, so tomorrow or the next day, I will make pasties and we'll have those for dinner and then whatever I have left over, I'll just put in the freezer already made and then we can take them out of the freezer, just pop them in the microwave or put them in the oven and have them as a pre-made meal. So everyone tonight will just eat the stromboli, which is totally fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. I checked our meatballs, they're not quite frozen yet. They need some more time, but once they are, I'm just gonna put them in a freezer Ziploc bag and add them to our little shelf here. So everything that we were able to accomplish today, we were able to get our pizza dough ready for dinner. We were able to get the potato soup, the chicken fajitas, 10 burger patties, and 60 meatballs, plus now our pasty filling, so we did another little meal prep item for the week ahead, which is awesome. I'm very happy with how today went. We got that all done in 70 minutes. So an hour and 10 minutes, we were able to get all of that done. No cooking involved here, which is always a plus, which helps it go really fast. Put some easy convenience items out in the freezer, stuff from the garden, stuff that we locally source, and that always feels really good. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me today in my kitchen, making some meals from scratch to have some convenience items for myself. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you are. I hope it's not snowing where you are, and if it is, I hope you're ready for it. You guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.